Hi, I'm Michael. I'm the developer of Loopy Pro. I'm using this video series to introduce Loopy Pro features one by one and to answer questions as they come in. I've had a few questions recently about implementing an Ableton-like workflow in Loopy Pro, where you have rows of loops that you can switch between like scenes, and where Loopy will automatically switch through them um, to progress through the song. There's actually a few templates that ship with Loopy Pro that go most of the way towards implementing this already. If you have a look in the sample projects folder, you'll see there's one there called 8x8 Scenes, and that's the one that I'm going to start with today. This is a copy of that project which I've just opened up and recorded a few loops to. You can see that by tapping the scene buttons at the right, I can switch back and forth through those sections, and I can tap individual loops to turn them on or off as I need to. By default, this project has no quantization, which means that as soon as I tap to change, it will immediately switch over playing or turn on and off loops. If I wanted to have that change happen on loop boundaries, I can open up clip settings here and set play and stop quantization to loop. That way now it will wait until the next boundary to begin playing. Another change that I recommend, and I will change this in the uh, template in the next version of Loopy because I think it makes things easier, is to go into clip settings again and turn off phase lock loops. What phase lock does is it means that the loop is always playing in the background. Um, you'll see right now with no loops playing, they have no playhead going around them. All the stopped loops are just idle. If I turn it back on for a second, you can see that all the playheads come back. In a way, it kind of means the loop is always playing, and if you turn it on or off, what you're really doing is muting and unmuting. So with phase lock turned off, it means that when you turn a loop on, it will play it from the beginning of the loop every time. That's pretty much what you want when you have a project with a bunch of scenes, because if the scenes are different lengths from each other, you might find them coming in and out at odd times in the loop. So I recommend turning phase lock off for this project. And now I can tap to change a scene, and it will wait until the longest playing loop that's currently playing has finished before going into the next scene. And if you want a quicker change than that, you can tap and then tap again to have it apply immediately. So that covers the sections and switching between them, but what happens if you want Loopy to be able to automate the whole session for you and be able to switch through those sections independently of what you do with your hands? That's where Loopy's sequencer comes in. The sequencer basically lets you automate uh, turning on or off loops. In the future, it will have other automations like turning on or off effects or changing parameters. So the idea is you would create a sequence and then have it play back and it will automatically manage all the loops for you. There are a few ways to create sequences. You can enter them in by hand or you can record them, which is probably the easiest in this case. If I tap the record button on the toolbar, you'll see that record sequence is one of the options there. Once I tap start recording, Loopy will do a quick count in and then we'll begin playing back. And then you can change which loops are playing and the sequence will remember what that is. So if I hit start now, it's going to go three, two, one, and now it's beginning the recording. So I'm gonna tap scene two now, and it's going to record those top loops playing and then switching over to the next group. I'll tap it again. And when it switches over, it will record that change as well, and so on, right to the end of the project. When I'm finished, I press the Rec button to end, and then you'll notice the new Seek button has turned up in the top. That lets you turn the sequence on and off. Switch to the sequence by tapping the button here at the bottom, and you can see there is our new sequence. You can pinch to zoom to be able to see more of the timeline in one go. And scroll around, you can see all of the sections are all set up now. Now, it might be out of order, you can grab each of these tracks and move them around to reorder them as you like. And you can pinch in the left header to change the vertical zoom too, so you can see more tracks at once. Now that we've got the sequence set up, we can hit play and Loopy will do all of the work for us in switching between the sections. So that handles the automation part of the equation here, but what happens if you want to be able to interrupt that, to switch back and forth between scenes, maybe to repeat a scene if you missed a cue in Loopy Pro 1.1, which I'm about to release, there's a new feature in the Seek to Timeline action, which lets you seek to particular sections in the sequencer. I'll show you how to map those buttons on the right-hand side of the project here to those actions so that you can switch back and forth through scenes, which will cause Loopy to jump to that point in the timeline and then play from there. So if we tap the pencil icon here to go into the editor, we'll start with the first scene button here. The way that I've implemented scenes in this project is to solo each row of clips. That allows you the flexibility of being able to turn on 
other clips from other rows at the same time, but still consolidate which ones are playing when you press the button. Now we can leave those solo actions here because they'll basically be ignored while the sequencer is running. Um, and if we turn off the sequencer, if you want to actually go completely off the sequence by tapping that sequence button in the toolbar, then it will still act as we expect. So we'll leave that action there and we're gonna add another action to it. So we tap the plus button for the press action and we're going to find the seek action here, seek timeline. We'll set the units to sections in that middle control there. And we'll begin with section one as the position. And now we just need to copy and paste that action for the other scene buttons and change which section it addresses. So I'm going to long press and hit copy to clipboard. This is a new feature in 1.1, which will be coming soon. Open up scene two, and I'm just going to long press on the header here and hit paste. And then modify that to section two. And we'll repeat it with the other buttons going down the row. Once that's done, we hit the pencil icon again to go back to the main canvas and we'll just test that it works. So we start playback. And then if we switch to a scene, it'll begin that count in. That's because of the solo action that we've got set to loop quantization. And then it will switch to the new scene that we've selected. And if we let it run, Loopy will automatically take it from there and play the next scene. And if we decide that we want to change it actually a bit more quickly than waiting for the end of the loop, we can tap it again and then it will immediately switch. So that's how you can automate a session in an Ableton-like fashion, have Loopy switch through the scenes for you. Of course, some of that functionality is based on version 1.1, which isn't out yet, but it will be very soon. So hopefully there won't be very long to wait. Another feature that's still to come, which I'm keen to put in there, is the ability to toggle looping on the current section. So that if you want to, for example, just improv over one particular scene there, you can turn on looping for that scene and Loopy will just continue looping through it without advancing. And then once you're done, you can tap it again and it will advance at the end. I think with that feature, then we'll have kind of the ultimate control over automating a session. And on that note, I better get back to finishing 1.1. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions or any other questions in the comments. See you soon.